Is GPT-3 dead? I mean, this is the official website. And if we scroll down to the bottom, what is it? It used to be on the footer side, but now it's gone even in the featured section. And if we go back to the 30th of September 2021 at archive.org, this is their website at that time. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can clearly see it right there. At that time, they were releasing OpenAI Codex to the public. So what is exactly happening right now with GPT-3? Will AI writers like Jasper AI, Copy AI and all others die right now? To understand the full story, we need to go back to as far as May 2020. At this date, OpenAI released the third generation of their GPT series model, GPT-3. This AI model has been trained on a large amount of data from the internet. How large? The data is estimated to have a capacity of 175 billion machine learning parameters and it's around 10 to the power of 14. 40 times more than GPT-2. Impressive. Also, GPT-3 is said to be able to generate human-like text and perform complex tasks such as question answering and machine translation. Moving to the next date. This is the date a lot of people were waiting for devastatingly. Finally, OpenAI released the public API for GPT-3 at that date, making it available for everyone to use. At that time, over 500 companies were using the AI giant GPT-3. Let's face it, GPT-3 has a big problem with factual accuracy. This is because it writes what is most likely to be true based on the data it has seen. So if the data is biased, then so is GPT-3. To combat this, OpenAI announced WebGPT, a new fine-tuned version of GPT-3 that uses a different training method. This is how OpenAI described it. We have fine-tuned GPT-3 to more accurately answer open-ended questions using a text-based web browser. Our prototype copies how humans research answers to questions online. It submits search queries, follows links, and scrolls up and down web pages. It's trained to cite its sources, which makes it easier to give feedback to improve factual accuracy. But why it's not being used by anyone yet? The reason is simple. It's currently in beta testing. Stay tuned for a new episode about this. Because GPT-3 is so good at generating human-like text, Bad text is also included. This includes untruthful, toxic, or reflect harmful sentiments. This is in part because GPT-3 is trained to predict the next word on a large data set of the internet text, rather than to safely perform the language task that the user wants. In other words, these models aren't aligned with their users. So OpenAI researchers wanted to fix that by creating a new fine-tuned model that can follow instructions, introducing InstructGBT. According to the official publication, this new model, InstructGBT, is based on the RLHF method, reinforcement learning from human feedback. The strange thing is that OpenAI labelers prefer outputs from the small 1.3 billion parameters in the StructGPT model over outputs from a big 175 billion parameters GPT-3 model. By the way, labelers are the engineers who are responsible for the human validation of an AI model. Their job is to give feedback based on the outputs they see from the model. Back to our main question, is GPT-3 dead? The simple answer is maybe and maybe not. Because after the official public release of the biggest AIs in the world, a lot of people have complained about its factual accuracy and how some users are misusing it. So OpenAI has to work on it to make it better. But that's not an easy task. Somehow they were able to develop these two new models in just 
two months. And they showed instruct GPT there instead of GPT-3. As for now, we can say that GPT-3 is still alive and AI writers will have to stay up to date with these new models. But only time will tell how long it will stay alive. That was all about text. Haven't you watched the wonders being made by OpenAI's most recent model? Del E2 for generating images from text. You can watch it here. It's the next big thing. Thank you for watching.